What's up people of the internet? I'm the big bold here with yet another video. In this video we will be testing the Intel Celeron N2840 which is a CPU based on the silver mode architecture and part of the Bechera family of power efficient processors. It has two cores to hyper threading of course and it has a burst frequency of up to 2.58 GHz. The Celeron N2840 has the Intel HD graphics page row as the integrated graphics, which have 4 unified shaders and a burst frequency of up to 792 MHz in the Celeron's case. It's also based on the same Ivy Bridge architecture as the Intel HD 4000 we learned of. We're using the latest drivers for it available. We also have 4GB of RAM in single channel mode, as well as a 500GB hard drive for the operating system and also on which game that we'll be playing today is installed. As for operating system we're using Windows X Lite Redstone Revival version 2. You can find the full description of the specs in the video description down below. After testing Outlast 1 in the previous video, it's time for Outlast 2. Shout out to the people who requested it once again, but before starting, a very important thing to mention. If you have the issue where the game is too dark after the interplane cutscene on pirated versions, there is a patch that fixes it, which I will share in the pinned comment down below. If you get an error when trying to install it, that means you've most likely downloaded the Fit Girl version of Outlast 2, but you've unticked the optional French voiceovers during download. Sadly, the only way I can think of to fix this is to reinstall the game entirely. Oh, and I have made a low end config just like for Outlast 1. It took me two motherfucking days to make it. Mainly because the game was crashing a lot to that weird pure virtual function called error during that time. And by the way, Outlast 2 takes quite a while to start on the Celeron N2840. Like, more than 5 minutes to get to the main menu and then load it to a save. And guess what? It didn't help much with the performance. In fact, it actually made the game more unstable, as if it wasn't stuttering and unstable enough. So I won't be showing how Atlas 2 runs with it in detail, but I will provide the download link to my low end config mod in the pinned comment too, since who knows, it might actually help some people run the game better. The final thing to say is that I will be using the legendary memory duct up yet again, set to free up the RAM when usage reaches 90%. And let's finally get straight to the point.